world, I'm Maya Sundermeyer, and I would like to welcome you to the latest episode of my blog series. So far, I have shared my experiences with you of what it's like for me to live with autism. Other times, I like to give my two cents as to what's going on with autism in the media. And finally, I will cover topics that I am passionate about that have absolutely nothing to do with autism whatsoever. And in this blog, I would like to continue to talk about my experiences of what it's like for me to live on the autism spectrum and deal with the isms of our society. And when I talk about isms, we have um, ageism, there's racism, sexism, um, and let's see, classism, you name it. And uh, to give you some examples, these are people that have been brainwashed by our society that think a certain way that um, a male or female needs to act a certain way, dress a certain way, wear their hair a certain way, talk a certain way, and, and fit into this mold by a certain age. And they need to uh, do this, and they need to do that, or they're considered odd. Like, for instance, uh, there are lots of people that don't like it that I cut my hair short. And to them, they probably think that I'm a lesbian, or they think that I'm probably a transgender male, uh, which is obviously not true. Um, just because I cut my hair short doesn't mean I have feelings for someone of the same sex. I mean, that's baloney. Or there are people that get the idea that uh, because I cut my hair short or because I've shaved my head that I've got a mental illness. I, I mean, that that's an ism. But uh, I wanted to give you guys a little example. So about a decade ago, uh, my aunt had uh, gone on vacation with a friend and uh, she had hired a respite provider to uh, overlook my situation and help me be a little more independent. And of course she wasn't very responsible and um, she wasn't really trained to deal with uh, someone with autism so she didn't know what to expect. She automatically thought, oh, she's high functioning. Um, I can still collect my paycheck and take care of her. Um, but she's a mature adult, so this has got to be fun. So it was when we were together that she discovered that I had a real passion for cartoons. And I talked about Shrek and Spongebob. And back then I had an old flipper phone with a uh, five-minute limit on each voice memo. And um, on one of these voice memos, I decided to imitate Shrek and Spongebob and just um, make a little joke about, about Sponge and and about Shrek being uh, maybe some sort of a superior species or something and Spongebob being annoying and of, of course I thought it was funny and uh, other people thought it was funny and I went ahead and I showed it to uh, this respite provider while we had gone out to eat during a postponed and rescheduled girls night and unfortunately um, it didn't work out for one thing, when I showed her the video, she was incredibly embarrassed that she didn't know what to do. She was clueless. And she says, uh, Maya, you and I need to have a serious woman-to-woman uh, -woman talk right now. And I said, okay, what's going on? Now, you're 23 years old, aren't you? That's what she said. And uh, you're talking about SpongeBob. You're talking about Shark's Tail. You're talking about The Incredibles. And you're talking about... All of these things that a 10 year old should like. And I want to know what's going on. Why are you talking about these things? Aren't you 23 years old? You need to be talking about things your own age. This is not appropriate. And I said, well, I don't act my age. I mean, emotionally, I'm still a teenager. And I also had mentioned to her that I had been going to um, an autism support group and that there were other people like me that. Um, we're in their 50s and uh, 30s that like cartoons. And of course, she minimized that and didn't listen. Yeah, yeah, we're not talking about them. We're talking about you. We're talking about what's appropriate versus what's not appropriate. Other girls your age don't talk about that. And then she also compared me to two other girls I met earlier. You didn't see them talking about cartoons now, did you? And I mean, I, when she said those things to me, she happened to say it right in front of the entire pizza restaurant. And of course, I was very embarrassed and I was very angry and it made me feel bad about who I was as a person and it made me rethink okay maybe I really am the freak and uh, she also said well other girls your age might think that's a joke but they not, may not dive into it the way you do and I said yeah well that's part of living on the spectrum it doesn't matter what age they are um, we're not going to be like everybody else and oh okay um, and then she started to try, started to tell me, well, let's not uh, tell people you've got Asperger's disease. So, and that's what she said. She called it Asperger's disease, a dummy. So, anyway, 
Um, I have some uh, commentary on that. Um, for those of you that are new to uh, doing respite work and for those of you that have a uh, ageist attitude, I have two words for you. Shut up. What the flag nod is your problem. You uh, agreed to work with uh, someone um, with a human detour system. You agreed to work with me. Um, I mean, what did you expect? I mean, when you, when you work with someone with a, quote, disability in your books, you need to understand that we're not going to be like everybody else. I mean, just because um, we're staying with you doesn't mean we're going to sit and watch, uh, watch the news with you. We might be uh, sitting in our rooms and watching cartoons, or we may be trying to create our own cartoons, and we may be coming up with our own ideas. So... Um, if you have any questions or comments about this, I mean, I would love to see them, and I would love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe. But um, to that respite provider, uh, you had absolutely no right to humiliate me like that in public. I mean, if uh, you were somebody who was, who was put on this good earth by God himself, you would have loved me no matter who I was. And you would have uh, probably tried to encourage me to go into drawing cartoons or you probably would have tried to expose me to brand new things or talked about, well, have you considered uh, voice acting or um, or have you considered working with the screenplays? I mean, you never take that away from somebody, you know, and you never try to make someone into something they're not. So until next time, I'm Maya.